Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here. You know, you know, don't you? The voice of hardcore boxing. That's why you've tuned in, because we say the things that nobody dares say. Right, uh, we're going to go straight in. Gonard's Deep, because that's how you lot like it, isn't it? Balls Deep. Well, let's have a look at what we've got here. Let's have a flick through, because what I can do if I want to get loads of views, we can do loads of little videos, you know, about five minutes, like all the rest of them. Put this out around here, it's doing me head in. Um, get loads of views and look pretty good and all that, blah de blah. But for me, it's more about putting a video on. And if people want to go to bed at night and they're ready to drop off. They just turn it on and just get in bed and drop off. That's what I do. We uh, podcasts and things like that. And then it just drops me up and not off to sleep. I mean, you don't have to look at my ugly mug on here, but you can just listen to podcasts. And I do that every night. I always listen to Asylum or Beautiful Boxing Podcast or Beyond Boxing in it, it's called now. There's, there's other ones I listen to. Yeah, uh, so so it's up to you what you do, but I'm not into all that quick five minute stuff and blah de blah. I don't think you can get your point across. And like I said, it's not it's not about views for us. We just want to get quality out there. So let's have a look. Eddie Earn going on about Haney, and um, and saying that. The unified WBA regular belt with another belt isn't isn't a unified. Well, what were you saying it were when Joshua were fighting for unified belts and may never had a regular, did he? So Carl Froch, you said that were a unified fight, didn't you? I mean Michael Buffer got in the ring, got on the microphone before the Pavetkin fight and introduced Anthony Joshua as the undisputed world champion go and look it's on google youtube but joshua's never won the wbc has he so it's contradiction after contradiction do i rate any no i don't think he can mix in that crowd at that weight with them other guys it's just my opinion eddie's going to put him in that mix but they don't really want to put him in with them we just want to keep milking it so stop chatting rubbish eddie as regards for that franchise champion thing, oh my god, nightmare. The Canelo TV carry on, right? This this is how I look at it with Canelo, right? This is how I look at it. Canelo is just happy to get out of that contract because so it could have been tied up for ages, and it shows that the zone, right? They're weak, letting him go. They're no fighting them. Would Frank Warren have let that go? No, they'd have gone to death, wouldn't it? Would Bob Arum? No, they'd have gone to death. Dazone? Yeah. And you know why? Because Eddie Earn will have been in the ear rolls because he doesn't like litigation, the frightened to death of it. It's pretty negative litigation and it's costly and it can go either way. We all remember Barry Hearn's court case with Steve Collins, don't we? Where Barry Hearn... Lost a lot of money and nearly went under. Google that. Barry Earn versus Steve Collins. All the transcript, transcripts, what was said, is on Google. Go and have a look if you want to know who's a crook in boxing. But like I said before, and I'll say it again, the rules are there. The rules are there, are there to, be, to be manipulated, aren't they? Let me just get into a good position here because uh, I like to be comfy when I'm... Uh, I'm talking, uh, talking boxing. So, but I'm pleased that Canelo's out of it, and he might just be a lone gun for hire now, and just wait, wait, work with with anybody. So that's how I look at it. Let's have a look what we've got now. So, as we go going back to Canelo, Eddie's saying he's in mix for Canelo. Well, everybody's in mix for Canelo. They're all going to bid, aren't they, for it? So we're going to see, aren't we? But I don't think they'll want to work with Eddie. Liam Williams to Matchroom. I could do this as a video on its own if I want, but 
like I said, I prefer people prefer these longer ones at the moment. It shows on analytics. You know, if normally people watch a 10 minute video, they're watching 20 percent of it. They're watching 60 percent of these long videos now. because So I know that people are putting them on at night. So this is why I'm, I'm just putting it all into one videos for now. We're trying to find our feet, aren't we? We're juggling things about. So if people prefer short videos, just watch a little bit a day. People prefer long videos. Whatever. Everybody prefers different things. Liam Williams to match him. Will it happen? I can see it happening, yeah. I can see it happening. It's boxing, isn't it? It's like Mo Salah to Real Madrid. Will it happen? Might do. You know, he's, he's 28, isn't it? So they might be ready to cash him in soon. I wish I had a woman that looked at me like I look at my milkshake. Right. So Liam Williams to match room, will it happen? Yeah, I think it could happen down the line. So very interesting. Liam Williams, most improved fighter in the UK in, in, in the last 12 months. In my opinion, I can't sit still, me, can I? Always have this problem. That's better, isn't it? That better. Uh, Andrade, Canelo, Golovkin, Saunders, Callum. Are they all going to fight each other? I don't know. I mean, this is the year that and, and, and last year that the fights are just not happening, are they? People are not fighting each other, are they? It's just not happening. Callum Smith and Saunders. Why can't they make that fight? Why can't they make Saunders Andrade? Why can't they put Golovkin in with Andrade? They couldn't even get Canelo in with Saunders or Canelo in with uh, Callum Smith. So I don't know really what, know what's happening here. Frank Warren, a.k.a. Bricktop, and Eddie Hearn, a.k.a. The Lion Bastard, are they ever going to have this dinner that they're supposed to be going to have? No, it's not going to happen, is it? It's been a few months now, hasn't it? I mean, how many months has it been now? It's just not happened, has it? There's talkers and there's smoky bacon walkers. That's how I look at it. And I've got no time for people that chat shit. That's all they're doing, isn't it? They're just chatting a load of shit. They're paying lip service to the fans. That's what they're doing. You're paying lip service to the fans and it's not good. I don't think they'll work with each other. I mean, they couldn't even get Conor Ben against Chris Jenkins of it line. So how are they going to get Joshua against Fury? It's utter knackers. That's not going to happen this year or next year. Ergovic, where's he going? I don't know really where Ergovic's going. Is he really that good? I don't know. Maybe he might be, but he's knocking on a bit now, isn't he? Why don't Dave Allen take the Ergovic fight? He's been in with Luis Ortiz. He keeps going on about Luis Ortiz, Tony Yoka, David Price. You know, he's, he's been he's been in Dylan White. Although Dylan White, for me, is just British level, just. I mean, would he beat Dubois? No. Would he fight Joyce? No. So he's been in with them guys, British and European stroke world guys, and took losses and not took rounds off them. So why can't he go in with Ergovic? What? Why, what's it with one more guy I mean he keeps saying I've been in with everybody get in with Ergovic there's a fight there to be made he's uh, one of your stable I mean you're a matchroom fighter aren't you Dave so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that but I'd like to see Ergovic against David Allen be a good fight that wouldn't it uh, Ern keeps going on about Hunter, uh, say, saying he's only got 9,000 subscribers on social media. Uh, so they didn't really want to bother with Hunter. Wheel class fighter like Hunter. But he's only got 9,000 subscribers. But yet, I don't want to dig Dave Allen out now, but he's got a loads, loads of subscribers, hasn't he? But he's area level, isn't he? Area stroke English level. But they'll give Dave Allen dates, but they didn't want nothing to do with Hunter. I don't get that. Whatever happened to it being about skill set. Which brings me to Instagram fighters versus 
fighters. There's fighters and there's Instagram fighters. Which is which? Is it all about getting a few quid and walking around in dressing gowns? Or is it about skill sets? Where is boxing heading at the moment in 2020? I don't know. It's very easy to, to uh, have a pop at somebody when you're not getting in the ring. I'm not getting in the ring. I'm a but. I'm a fan as well as doing this boxing channel and I'd like to think I do know a bit about boxing, but mainly I'm a boxing fan. I want to see great fights. I don't want to see as, I don't want to see boxing go down the route of wrestling. If you know what I mean? I don't want to see it like that because in wrestling, there's Olympic wrestling, isn't there? Like Randy Couture, Olympic level wrestler. And then there's big daddy and giant ace stacks, isn't there? And we seem to be going down, this pantomime route, don't we, at the moment? There's, there's, uh, Eddie's running right anyway with this social media thing. Somebody said on here over there, I don't know where it were in the comments section, is Eddie Earn's greatest achievement uh, the, so what he's done with social media and, you know, and all these bot accounts and, and fake news and no context in and this and that. Is that where boxing's heading? Is that, has boxing become a bit of a sideshow to MMA now because those guys in MMA, they take the losses, don't they? They got, don't go to the bottom of the pile. So, but who cares? Candle and White. Go. Oh, can, Candle and White go into a different governing body? Well, he's, he's obviously he's a WBC man, isn't he? And he's staying there ages. Why don't he go into one of the other governing bodies? Yeah, I mean... They did it with Anthony Joshua. He was going WBC route, and it looked like he'd have to fight Povetkin and then Wilder, or Wilder, if Povetkin didn't want it. He jumped to IBF and fought Charlie Martin. So why can't Dylan White go another route? I mean, he doesn't seem to be getting anywhere with WBC. He seems to have been parked up with WBC, and just his, his narrative is, let's just bitch about the WBC and not have a world title, so... I don't know. Oh, my face feels tight today. I've just had a facial. Uh, Fabio Wardley versus Dave Allen. Why not? I think that's a good fight. Uh, Dave Allen says he needs a, a camp for that, but and he just had a camp. Didn't Eddie Earn just come out and say, well, Dave just needs, he needs a camp for that, a better camp. And he just said he's stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet than the Jamie Moore. And he's, he, why not? Fabio Wardley, I mean, what's what's going on there? So Dave Allen's going to be in an eight-rounder, then Fabio Wardley at New Year. Why not now? Why keep prolonging it? Uh, Joshua Fury, that's not going to happen in 2021. Uh-uh. Two hundred and twenty-four pound bridge away. Why can't they just call it Super Cruiser? Why do they have to call it Bridge Away? I don't get that. I don't get that at all. But it's different, something different, isn't it? They're going to get more sanctioning fees for an extra belt, aren't they? So it is what it is, isn't it? But I think it's all a bit of a mess. I think it's a bit of a mess. But what can you do? Should have been sorted out years ago, that. Uh, what's disappointing mean in boxing, Russell? Well, for example, if I'm doing an interview with Dennis and I say, oh, Dennis, what do you think about Fred Bloggs saying that? And Dennis will go, well, it's a bit disappointing from him that, that that's because the camera's rolling. But if you were in a pub, you'd say, Dennis, what about Fred Bloggs saying that? And he'd say... He'd say his bit, wouldn't he? He'd cut him down in two. But when the cameras point up, they say, it's disappointing from Joe Gallagher, like Eddie Earn. Bit disappointing from Joe Joe Gallagher. And Sky were a bit disappointed with it, blah, blah, blah. What it means is the raging. So when you hear the word disappointing, it's a bit like when Dave Allen comes out to fight and he's fighting David Price and, and Adam Smith's there saying, rough, tough, rugged, durable, all action, compelling, added spice. This one's got added spice, Matthew Macklin. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. Added spice. 
When they say he's game and he's durable and he's up for it, it means they're going to get bladders. So get your money on other guy. And you heard that many times when somebody gets you ring and they say, he's game and he's really up for this and I've got a squeaky bum, Coogan. Uh, let's have a look. This Chinaman, the big Chinaman that Joshua beat in the Olympics, he's number 40 on box rec. Why is he even in the mix to... Uh, why is he even in the mix to... Uh, and be mentioned in the same breath as Joshua has beat nobody and they've got unfinished business. What what planet are you on, Bean? What planet is Beanie on? It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. But Savannah Marshall, Clarissa Shields. I want to see that fight. Why can't they make that now? They should be making it. Get that fight on in the UK because Peter Fury can't go to America. Because they won't give him a visa. So let's have it on in UK. Otherwise, I don't think it'll happen in America. Terry O'Connor back judging last night. Good old Terry O'Connor. So nice to see him back as if. I mean, Terry O'Connor, how is he even back judging again after that other fight? It'd be interesting to see what the scorecards were on, on the fights that he judged last night. So I bet your bottom dollar there were a few 115, 113s. You know, they call them the splinter scores, don't they? Because they sat on the fence. Uh, Everard is having a bit of beef with Eddie Hearn. Eddie seems to get his sent into every scenario, doesn't he? Because he's got that many fighters. Everard is going on about Eddie digging her out over equality and pay and all that and blah, blah, blah. But I tend to side with Eddie Hearn on that. So Everard, you jog on. You're fighting two-minute rounds. But I wish you all the best in your career, and I like you in them glasses. You look all right in them. You look like school SWAT. So, Terry O'Connor, Savannah Marsh, we mentioned that. Uh, right, it really just got these. I've picked a few questions. I'm not going to go through all, all questions because I'll be here all day. And... Uh, so I've got to go to work and get some graft done. Uh, where's these questions? Oh, here we are. Here we are. What I've done, I've read them out of a thing because I'm blind as a coot. And uh, I've only got my driving glasses. I ain't got my proper glasses. They're at office. So I'm squinting like that, like a Chinaman. Right. Question from Mike Daruki. Hi, mate. I hope you're well. I've got more than one question. Take your pick. Do you think that Eddie Hearn, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury have been having conversations behind the scenes and have all agreed to play it out and milk it for as long as they can while tricking the fans and making them believe the current status and that they had these conversations years ago? Question two from Mike Daruki. Uh, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't really know about that, to be honest. I just think that they're just doing what they want, uh, Mike. Mike Daruki, do you think that Eddie had prior knowledge of this current pandemic? There is evidence that other big companies knew about this pandemic a long time before it started and had already geared up their businesses so that they could still operate relatively unaffected by lockdown, lockdowns, etc., etc. Matt Schumer could have used this prior knowledge to have an advantage in many ways. Cheers, mate. Mark. But it says... Cheers, mate, Mark, but the email is A-R-N-D-E-N-A-A-N. I don't know. It's, it's Mike Daruki. It's Mike Daruki, why are you signing your emails as Mark? And why is your email something totally different? I don't know. I don't know what to make of some of these questions that come in. This is the sort of stuff that we get sent in. It's just people trying to take my time up. Listen to this one. Question from Sean and Zach Neeson. Book, mate, my question is, if they tested all fighters, 
worldwide or in England, how many on percentage would there be using steroids? Question. Uh, I think that. Uh... I think there'd be a few if they tested. They don't test until championship level, do they? So, are the cheaters the guys that are turning pro? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But I think that everybody should be tested, or they should just scrap it and let them all take what they want. Then it's an even playing field. But it's one or other. Question from Pete Hutchins. Paul. Uh, here we are. <coughs> Who thought it was a good idea to feed Mumba to that animal? Was he that hard up for a payday? Is this what is happening now? Lads working their way through early levels, having to turn into journeymen because COVID has shut down the small old scene. That's some Pete Hutch. I don't know really. You'd have to it's some you'd have to speak to it manager, but the fighters They've got to earn, aren't they? But you're going to get a lot of matchmaking at the moment, whereas people just want to get out and get a few quid and they're not bothered if they lose because they've got families to feed. So boxing's in a dark place at the moment, but it's something that you'd have to take up with uh, his management. So, all right, they make the decisions. So, there we are. I like the look of Wardley, hoping Big Tom Little gets rid of that Babic, another X-Factor Chico time Wagner character. They like to bring out the, for the token comedy bout. That's from Aaron Bayer. Uh, Aaron, uh, I don't rate that Babic. I think he's uh, a bit of a gimmick. Do you know what I mean? I mean... You've got Coogan running around saying it's Babic time and all that. What, like Chico time? So I see where you're coming from. And uh, what was that other thing you were doing? What time is it? And what were they shouting? Babic time. I think I've heard that one. We, we another box, were it Aaron Pryor? So I don't know, but this is where we're heading now. Circus acts. Question from Gareth Hancock. Gareth M. Hancock, sorry. Simple question, but not so much simple answer. Liam Williams versus Liam Smith free. Who wins? Mike. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that's a 50 50 fight if they fight at 160, 154 pound. At 160 pound, you might shade it toward Liam Williams, but it's a good fight for a trilogy. And I can see that happening because they're not giving anything to Beefy Smith at the moment at match room, are they? And it looks like he might be ready to jump ship because it looks like they're in a bit of a tight spot, doesn't it? With Gallagher and Eddie Earn having the Cold War. Question for the gloves. If Usek fights Joshua, will he beat him? And if he does, do you think Fury will go for Usek? And how do you think that fight would pan out? Fury and Usyk, I think Fury might be too big for him, but fantastic skill sets, both of them. Here we've got one here from Phil Jeffries. We, who was heavyweight champion of the world years ago and played one game for England? I don't even know that one. We aren't going on Google, Phil. So that one's beat me. So that must be a trick question. Does it, is it England at darts? Is it England at cricket? Is it England at football or rugby? You didn't say, mate. So... I think that's about it, really. Thank you for liking and subscribing and leaving your comments and sharing the videos. It's much appreciated. Uh, keep the questions coming in. Uh, I'm going to have to send best, better questions than that. I'm going to go through all the rest of them tomorrow. But like I said, it's time consuming when because uh, I'm having to do a lot of things on my own at the moment. I'm not exactly the sharpest tool in box with computers, am I? Um, I just keep forgetting to do stuff. It's like my passport form over there. I still haven't filled that in. So, all right. So, thank you for tuning in. Peace out. Let's have a look how I turn this.